good afternoon. My name is uh, Stuart Manser from Beta Laser Mic. Uh, Beta Laser Mic is a, a company making non-contact uh, measuring equipment and uh, control devices based in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we've been in existence since uh, 1972. We had the original pattern on the laser scan micrometer. Uh, today, I'm going to be presenting uh, the laser speed non-contact length and line speed measuring device. Uh, this is a device that's used for um, uh, controlling and accurately uh, producing uh, product length information. Uh, what we're going to run through today is uh, how we can um, improve productivity on production lines, uh, where the needs are for in, in medical processes for accurate length measuring, uh, the type of traditional measurement approaches that um, uh, customers and producers of, um, uh, of medical devices currently employ. Uh, the, the new technology, the laser speed device, we're going to run through how that works and, um, and uh, how it functions. And then we're going to look at some, then we're going to look at some application examples for uh, uh, the laser speed and uh, deploying non-contact measurement on uh, production line. And then finally, uh, return on investment and accuracy of that return on investment uh, throughout the production environment. And then uh, at the end, we're going to be uh, if there's any questions or anybody wants to uh, pose anything, um, we're going to have a question session at the end of uh, the presentation. So uh, I've no need to tell everybody that you know, global competition for production is extremely fierce. Uh, most manufacturers are driven to optimize their process and improve that process and compete on a global production environment. Uh, we're driven to improve quality and uh, remain economically viable and competitive in this environment. Uh, the problem we're going to pose here is that uh, length and line speed measurement inaccuracies cause uh, a, a lot of scrap, rework, uh, quality issues and material waste and uh, in some cases where it's extreme product returns as well. Um, the good news is um, with uh, the advent of non-contact uh, laser velocimetry, there is an um, option for providing an accurate uh, measurement solution for uh, length and line speed. Uh, this is replacing the current measurement methods throughout the production environment. Uh, now we're going to run through where these um, units might be deployed and used in the uh, production environment. Um, traditionally, there's uh, also in the medical packaging field, there's a, a continuous length process where reels and uh, sheets are produced. Also, with medical devices, we might be cutting those um, medical tubes to length, uh, and there's tolerances involved in cutting those uh, tubings to length as well. And also, in the, in the tubing environment, we're also looking at uh, speed control for these particular processes also. Uh, in the case of uh, medical di disposables, there's also some stretch and draw control for sheet applications, and particularly in non-woven applications, that's uh, critical to the re resultant finish of that particular product. Uh, Pharmaceutical products, uh, there's also some product positioning involved in that. Sanitary products like uh, diapers and such like, uh, there's some uh, key quality control issues that need to be addressed in manufacturing of diapers, including all of the components that go into it and the positioning of those components to go into those uh, particular products. Uh, the other part of that would be um, uh, Band-aids and such like, where these are being cut to length and need to be indexed correctly for cutting as well. And there's additional components that are installed onto those uh, devices. The current um, measurement um, approaches for length and line speed normally involve contact encoders, which would um, actually run on the product or run on associated product with uh, run on associated machinery with these products like shafts, wheels, and such like. Uh, so these would include what are commonly known as rotary encoders, wheel tachometers, drive encoders. The problems with these um, are, are traditionally slippage, 
where the wheel has to contact that product with friction and it's going to be jumping around and causing uh, some sort of um, slippage of the product and reduction in accuracy. The day-to-day -day wear of the wheel causing uh, an inaccuracy in calibration. If you're doing a, a, um, an adhesive product or something similar, uh, there's also a chance of debris build up on the wheel causing uh, the, the, a lack of calibration and an increase uh, in the inaccuracy as well. In some cases as well, uh, to, to ensure that there's no slippage, the actual um, encoder has to be applied to the product with such friction that it causes marking of that product and damage of that product. That's particularly um, prevalent in uh, some thin films, flexible, and other products that are on a web basis. So, and, and then the final uh, problem with these devices is calibration and service of these as well. The, the typical inaccuracies of these devices through survey, both from uh, customers and our own evaluation, typically looking at inaccuracy of 1% to 2% or greater. Now we run through what the solution is for the replacement of uh, mechanical encoders. This would be the um, laser speed non-contact velocimeter. As the name suggests, it's totally non-contact, so it doesn't mark or come into physical contact with the product. It uses Doppler velocimetry technology, and um, really a fancy way of saying a non-contact encoder. Um, there is a, a Doppler portion to this, which I'll explain a little later. It's highly accurate, repeatable, the product length and speed measurements. And the accuracy, if you remember from the past slide, the accuracy of the contact encoders is 1 to 2%. The accuracy of this device is 0.05% or better. And the repeatability, if you measure the, uh, from one part to the other, is 0.02%. These devices um, have been around in one form or another for about 15 years, but they started off in suitcase pieces of equipment. And uh, we've commercialized it, made it smaller, made it easier to deploy in a, in a factory environment uh, and easier to apply to most um, applications. The other advantage of using a laser velocimeter is that these are also permanently calibrated. We use the wavelength of laser light to ensure that uh, the unit produces the, the most accurate uh, performance out of length measurement. We also keep the um, laser diode at a constant temperature to ensure that this is permanently calibrated as well. So in some cases, in addition to fitting these on production lines, some customers also use these for going from production line to production line where there is an existing encoder to calibrate, these, to calibrate the existing machines as well. Now for how the technology works. Um, the encoder uh, is placed generally above the object you're requiring to measure, either that's a cylindrical object or a, or a sheet or film, and then we're shining down at the product. The terminolo terminology for this uh, device is standoff distance, that's how far the uh, encoder is mounted away from the um, product. I'll get my pointer here. So we've got uh, a standoff distance here, and this is variable depending on what the product type is. We also have what's called a depth of field here, which is the allowable movement for the product. So generally, these, are, these are two functions are selected depending on um, how big a range of diameter or thickness your product has. And then if your product has some sort of contaminated environment, we can move the standoff distance further away to account for either temperature or for uh, a contamination from uh, dust uh, or um, uh, some sort of um, moisture in, in the product. We can all, this, this device also works irrespective of product uh, shape, surface, or color. So we can measure corrugated product, uh, textured surface. Um, no matter what this is pointed at, uh, we, we're going to get a, a length and line speed reading from it. There's a math test for you here. The way the system works is very simple. We take um, one laser diode source, we split that into two beams. Uh, the two beams have the same frequency. Uh, these two beams are projected through the standoff distance down onto the product. Where the, where the beams come into contact with the product, uh, we cause a, 
this causes an interference, an adding and subtracting of the light source. This um, interference pattern is very small. It's probably a three millimeter by one millimeter uh, ellipse that's projected down onto the product. In simple terms, what happens is as we project these two beams at the same frequency down onto the product, we have la laser light scattered from the product back to a sensor which is sitting in the gauge in the center position between these two projected beams. The resultant frequency that's received by that sensor is measured and integrated over time to produce a length measurement and then to produce also a velocity having known, having known what the uh, original frequency of the laser was. So it's actually a, a fairly simple process to make a measurement and easy to deploy in the um, manufacturing environment. Um, the trick is to collect the data or s to collect the resultant frequency from uh, the projected beams and uh, interpret that data accurately inside the gauge. Uh, there's no additional processor required other than the gauge. All the processing is done inside the gauge and then uh, delivered out to um, uh, the, the addi additional equipment on the production line. Now we go through um, some of the capabilities of the gauge. Uh, we can go up to, I'm not sure that anybody's making a, a, a 39 feet per minute product in this uh, production, uh, in, in this uh, presentation, but if they did, they'd probably make uh, millions of dollars, but it, it has the capability to go up to that velocity. Uh, different standoff distances, we start off at a four inch standoff and go up to a 40 inch standoff. And different depths of fields from uh, up to three inches of allowable movement of the product in the measuring environment. Uh, we can also adjust the um, quadrature pulse rate coming out of the unit uh, up to five megahertz. Um, here's some application examples. Um, this is a sanitary product manufacturing line actually making um, a non-woven for, for a diaper. Um, the problem was inaccurate length uh, at the slitter and rewinder due to the mechanical encoder. Um, there was a trade-off between the amount of pressure that we could uh, put on the um, encoder and the slippage and build-up of that encoder. Uh, that, was in that was causing a lot of indexing problems and, uh, and resultant uh, lack of quality and uh, scrapping of product. Uh, the solution was to put uh, you know, a, a length and line speed device, a laser ballistimeter, laser speed unit on there, to get the accuracy and length accuracy up to 0.05%. Uh, the re results from this customer were we eliminated a 2% um, product giveaway. They realized up to a $40,000 savings per year, and their return on investment was uh, at three months. As you can see, that's a fairly compelling uh, uh, application for uh, uh, use for this product. Uh, another application here for uh, medical packaging and production. Uh, here again, uh, this was an in indexing application uh, due to tachometer slippage again. As you can imagine with a, a um, medical packaging and production line, the product's fairly shiny and trying to apply a contact encoder on that without slippage is, is rather difficult. The uh, solution again was to uh, put a, a laser encoder on this uh, that was, was actually going to measure the product without having to apply uh, a great degree of um, uh, pressure on the product, damage it, or uh, have any problems with slippage. Uh, basically, we dramatically increased uh, the length accuracy and also the print quality because there was no problem with overlaying of uh, different colors on the product. Uh, we reduced the scrap of the product. And one of the big things that we find comes out from, from our customers is a, a decrease in maintenance. What, what is surprising from us is that we've actually sold this product uh, predominantly on return on investment but one of the big factors that comes out is that uh, customers are spending a lot of time on maintaining their mechanical encoders and uh, trying to get uh, accurate calibrated results out of them. Uh, that uh, a big part of that um, return on investment is uh, decreased maintenance. Uh, one other application example, um, which I was personally involved in, was uh, medical tubing manufacturing. Uh, length and line speeds and uh, inaccuracies on flexible tubings and other types of tubings uh, is, is up to and, inc and including one, it's got 1% there, but we are actually up at about 5% on one application 
on cut to length applications. Normally the encoder is built into the um, puller um, and that, if that puller isn't properly adjusted and doesn't pinch the product correctly in the production environment, it causes slippage. So um, they had excessive uh, slippage problems, inaccuracies, and trying to cut these lengths of tubes was a, a distinct problem. Uh, the results here was we put the laser encoder on the output side of the, um, uh, the, the Caterpillar puller on the tube production line. We improved the cut to length accuracy and the shrinkage uh, factor on that tube as well. We reduced product waste, scrap, and again, uh, returned a higher quality product and uh, saved the company money. Uh, here's a typical um, ROI for um, measurement accuracy. You know, depending on what the production facility operation time is, but uh, 355 production days per year, 22 hours of production a day. Um, line red production was uh, 210 feet per minute. And we, we can then look at the, how much the material was and the overhead was of that product. Current encoder accuracy, uh, we're being very generous here and saying it's 1.5%. The total giveaway based on length is 88 thousand um, dollars. Traditionally on a lot of these production lines people look at uh, finite dimensions like thickness, diameter, uh, product uh, caliper and people do forget to look at the length of the product because it's, it's quite easy and our company is involved in measuring thickness and diameter and producing thickness and diameter machines that go in and control a production line but what a lot of people forget to look at is on a continuous production line what the cost of that uh, increase or inaccurate length is on the production line. That's why there's some significant savings to be had by uh, getting that feature of a production line under control. So savings are realized by obviously min minimizing product waste, reducing product shortages and overages. If you can measure it, you can do something about it basically. Uh, increasing the product quality delivered to your customer. Uh, eliminating maintenance, you don't have to um, go in and calibrate the uh, contact devices. Uh, minimizing downtime, when you, con when you calibrate those contact devices, you have to take the production line down. And also lowering the cost of ownership of that um, contact device or electro-optic encoder. So the conclusion is that it's important that medical manufacturers look at proven ways to increase profitability, product quality in the bottom line. Implementing high accurate length and line speed measurement is key. And non-contact laser encoder has been proven in many, many processes to help you reduce that giveaway and scrap on the product. And so the result is uh, precision length, length speed measurements for today's quality driven manufacturers. Basically, as I said before, if you can measure it, you can do something about it, you can improve the quality. And starting that is by having a device that you can rely on and can produce higher uh, quality measurement results uh, so that you can know how to, um, so you can reduce uh, your, your, your um, giveaway and scrap. At the end of my presentation, does um, anybody have any questions? Thank you very much.